friends! Welcome back to another Freebie Friday. This week we are going to be sewing up the Blue Kala Lilac Mini Messenger Bag. I've had my eye on this pattern for a long time, but it's taken me quite a while to build up the courage to sew it, so I'm super excited to do this with you today. Okay, you are going to need an outer weight fabric. I am using this sh super sparkly um, vinyl that I got from Sew Unique Designs, and then another super cute textured vinyl that I got from a buy sell trade group. Um, you are going to also need a inner fabric. I'm using just some quilting cotton. You could use woven canvas, I think. Um, and then you're going to need some SF 101 and then some fusible fleece. And you're also going to need some lightweight use fusible interfacing. Uh, you're going to need a zipper. I'm using zipper tape and a zipper uh, tab. And then you're going to want a closure. I'm going to use a magnetic closure. They have a different one in the instructions, but I had a magnetic one laying around, so I thought, let's give it a try. We are going to need to cut out two body pieces, or they're also labeled A on the instructions. So two body of your exterior, two body lining pieces, two body SF 101 or interfacing pieces, and two fusible fleece body pieces. Then we're going to move on to the flap, which is labeled B on the pattern. You need one exterior, one lining, two SF-101 interfacing, and one fusible fleece interfacing. And then for your pocket piece, which is labeled C on the pattern, you're going to need two lining fabrics and one SF-101 interfacing. Now we're going to move on to our strap pieces really quick. For your D-ring or O-ring straps, you're going to need two 5x4 in your exterior and two in your lightweight um, interfacing. I Here's the hardware that I'm using. I had D-rings on hand, so I'm going to use those instead of O-rings. It works just as fine, but um, what happen, what's going to happen is those, those pieces are going to attach to your D-rings and it's going to help hold your straps. So two 5x4 in your exterior and two 5x4 in your lightweight interfacing. Then um, you're also going to need a slider uh, piece and then for an, the inside pocket or for the zip pocket I'm sorry you're going to want two 8x6 pieces in your lining and two 8x6 pieces in your lightweight interfacing. And then for your strap, this was kind of tricky because there wasn't um, instructions on the length. So I made mine 54 inches, which was the length of the vinyl that I had left. Um, so you want 54 inches by four inches, or the length by four inches. Um, I do recommend if you're using vinyl, do not do four inches, do two inches, because instead of folding it in, in half and then in half again, you're gonna wanna just fold it in half. But you're also gonna want the same length in your lightweight interfacing. Okay, now that all our pieces are cut out, we need to prep them by attaching all our interfacing. So to start with, you are going to take your body pieces, your two exteriors, you're going to flip them so that the, the wrong side is up, so right side down, and then you are going to put your SF-101 onto the, the wrong side of those pieces. And then we're just going to iron those on to keep them to get them nice and attached and then um, you're also going to need to take your out your exterior flap and iron on your SF 101 onto that as well your um, your o-ring or d-ring pieces we're going to iron on the lightweight interfacing onto those again if you're using vinyl I recommend not having them in the um, five by four, but rather in half, two and a half by four. And then we're going to attach our lightweight interfacing to our strap as well. Now that all of our interfacing is ironed on our SF 101, we are going to iron on our fusible fleece interfacing onto our exterior piece. So to do that, we need to actually trim away the seam allowance. So all the way around our fusible, interf our fusible fleece interfacing, we're going to cut off the 3 8 inch seam allowance the whole way around. Okay, so once we cut off all that 3 8 inch seam allowance, we are going to center it on our flat piece and then just iron it on to keep it in place. 
All right, now that our interfacing is all ironed on to our exterior pieces, here you can see the 3 8 inch seam allowance removed from the fusible fleece on our exterior pocket. Um, we're going to go ahead and put the interfacing on all of our lining pieces as well. So take your two body lining pieces and we're going to use two SF-101 interfacing onto those. One of our pocket C pieces is going to get interfacing. The other one will not. And then our flap piece, our lining flap piece, will also get interfacing. And then our zip pocket, both pieces of those will need interfacing. So you should only have one piece that doesn't get interfacing. All right, so all of our interfacing is on all of our pieces and we are ready to start assembling. And I cannot wait, this is so exciting. Okay, so now we are gonna move on to prepping our um, O-ring or D-ring strap pieces. Um, I recommend if you are using vinyl to just cut these pieces in half and fold them in half and not quarter them like this. Um, the seam allowance gets too big if you do. But okay, so you're gonna fold it in half. I am finger pressing these pieces because I realized very quickly that if you try to iron vinyl, it does not work out well. So here you can see I lost all my shimmer on this one. And so I am finger pressing. If you're not if you're not using vinyl, go ahead and use your iron. But we're gonna fold it in half so that we have a crease in the half in the middle of our piece. And then we're gonna fold up the two ends, open the piece, fold up the two ends so that they meet at that crease and then fold it in half again. So if you're using woven or canvas, it's not gonna be quite as thick as this. Um, mine, like I said, if you're using vinyl, I would just really, really recommend only making your piece instead of five by four, two and a half by four, because it's, and then just folding in half instead of these, instead of quartering, because it just gets so thick in your seams. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our two pieces and sew along both sides at an eighth inch away. Now that our O-ring or D-ring in my case pieces are put together, we're just going to slip our hardware over and then fold it in half, making sure that's nice and centered. And then we're going to just baste along the top edge there. So um, you're going to do that to both pieces. Just go ahead and slip the hardware over, fold it in half, and then we're going to baste them closed. Now that our O-ring or D-ring pieces are done, it's time to get our strap ready. So what we need to do is we need to fold both short ends of the strap in, so wrong sides together, a half an inch. And then we need to go through and fold the strap in half, just like we did with the O-ring uh, or D-ring in my case, <laughs> um, pieces. Fold it in half, and then we're going to open it up and make, bring the two sides into that fold and then um, fold it in half again. Um, again, if you are using vinyl, this gets so stinking thick um, that I had to actually, with the strap, I couldn't do it. I had to um, go back through and make a new strap where it was just folded in half. I didn't remake my O-ring or D-ring pieces, which I really wish I would have because when I went to um, sew them in and rein like reinforce them when I top stitched around the bag. It was a nightmare. So um, this this bag, vinyl works really great for this bag. I really like the look of it and it gives it a nice solid feel. 
but you just have to make some adjustments when using vinyl for this because it just gets so stinking thick. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm making the strap here with my vinyl, but if you are doing vinyl, definitely just fold it in half. Um, so instead of cutting it the length that you want, so like I said, I cut mine 54 inches. I wish I would have done 56 inches, but I didn't have quite that much in my vinyl. Um, but cut it the length you want, and then instead of cutting four inches, I would have cut two. But, all right, so yep, and then again, you're going to want to press this. I'm finger pressing and just using clips because I learned vinyl does not like to be pressed. <laughs> um, at least I haven't figured it out yet. I didn't have a lot of time to play with it, but... Um, and then once the two ends are met in the middle, we're just going to fold that strap in half so that our raw edges are now enclosed inside of our strap. Okay, once your folds are done, um, you can press it one more time if you're using non-vinyl, non but we are going to go ahead and sew along both edges an eighth of an inch away. Okay, so now you're going to take your strap. Here you can see that this one is just folded in half now. You're going to take your strap and your slider piece. And we are going to just put the fab our strap over this middle bar. So you're going to stick it through one opening and just right out the other way on the other side. And once our strap piece is over the middle bar of our slider piece, we're going to overlap the strap by about an inch, inch and a half, and then sew along the top there to really lock that strap in place. All right, now that our slider bar is attached to our strap, we are done with prepping our strap pieces, so we can go ahead and set those aside. And we are gonna grab out our exterior and our lining flap pieces. Okay, so we're gonna take our exterior flap piece and we are gonna put it right sides up and put our, our lining piece right sides together so that the two wrong sides are, are on the outside right now. And then we're just going to go ahead and pin and clip all the way around the two pieces, making sure the raw edges are all lined up nicely and it's not too wonky or anything. Then we are going to use a 3 8 inch seam allowance and sew all the way around the sides and the bottom, leaving the top of our flap open. So when you sewed this, you should have sewn right, not over the fusible interfacing, but um, right next to it. So now that we've got the flap all sewn together, we're going to just go ahead and cut 
the seam allowance. Um, you want to get it as close to the stitches as you can, but do not cut through those stitches. Other words, you're going to have a nightmare and you're going to have to restitch things. So I recommend leaving about a quarter of an inch. Um, you just what we're trying to do right now is remove the bulk from this because um, again it can start to add up and get pretty pretty unwieldy all right so now that we cut the seam allowance away we are going to just flip it so that right sides are out Make sure nothing's folded over and then we're just going to go ahead and press that. Now that it's all nicely pressed, we are going to top stitch around the top of the flap, an eighth of an inch away. I love how this turned out. Okay, now it's time to add our um, hardware, our clasp. Because I'm doing a magnetic clasp, this is going to be slightly different, but um, still pretty close to the same um, same technique. So we're going to fold our flap in half so that right sides are to, or the exterior pieces are together, and then we're going to measure up one inch from um, the bottom there. That is going to be where our clasp is going to start. Now, again, because I'm using magnetic, I want mine to be um, invisible. So I'm gonna take a board and put it inside my flap so that my clasp doesn't come on the outside of it. So, so I'm just gonna cut through the lining on mine. If you're using the twist lock like they do in the instructions, you'll wanna make sure it goes through the exterior as well. Um, if you're using a magnetic clasp like I am, you're gonna wanna put your, um, your little piece on that one inch mark and just mark where those um, the two side slots are and then you're gonna want to take your seam ripper and making sure not to go past those marks you're gonna make just tiny little slits where your marks for your piece were And then I'm going to take my male end of my snap, my magnetic snap, and I'm going to put the prongs into those slits that I made and get them in there. Um, if you need to go back through and cut, you can, but get them into the slits and then we're going to flip it, flip the fabric a little bit so we can see the inside and we're going to put the, um, the backing piece on it and just fold those prongs over. I like to fold them to the outside, you can fold them to the inside, whatever you prefer. But that's gonna lock that magnetic piece in there now. And here you can see um, the magnetic clasp is on the front, on the lining side, but not on the exterior. Then our clasp is on the flat piece. We need to do the same to our bo exterior body piece. So grab your exterior body piece and then on the body piece pattern, there is a marking there for your clasp. You're gonna wanna transfer that onto your body piece. And then um, just, yeah, again, put the backing of the magnetic clasp on right on that, that marking. Mark the two slits. Use your seam ripper to cut them open. And then just like we did with the other side, we're gonna put the prongs, but this time the prongs are gonna go on the right, or we're gonna go from the right side of the bag fabric towards the back. So the prongs will be in the back. Um, and then just slip that backing piece over and fold those prongs to the outside or inside, whichever you prefer. And now that both of our clasp pieces are on our bag, we just want to test to make sure that they're right and they don't look too wonky or too off-centered. Um, so just go ahead and put your 
flat piece on and make sure that you like the look of it and oh my gosh I'm so excited <laughs> Okay, now that our clasp pieces are attached, we are going to take our other exterior bag piece and our zip pocket piece, which is the 8x6 piece that we cut out. We're going to fold that piece in half, right sides together, and that's going to show us the halfway point of this pocket, the, the middle of our pocket. Then measuring one inch down from the top, we're going to make just a little mark to um, remind us where to start our box for our zipper. And then line up your ruler so that there's three inches on either side. And we're just going to make a six inch line right down the middle there. Make sure it's nice and dark so that you can see it. I'm using a heat erasable Frixon pen, so sometimes you need to do a little bit more. And then we are going to go down the side three eighths inches. This ruler is so old that most of my markings are, are, are gone. So sorry, I'm trying to find some place that I can see three eighths inches. So mark three eighth inches down on both sides of that six inch line that we drew. And then we're just gonna attach them there at the bottom. Now this is going to be our zipper opening. Okay, so now that our box is all drawn in and we can see it, we are going to take the exterior bag piece and we're going to fold it. Actually, you're going to fold it wrong sides together. I, I made the mistake. Um, you're just going to want the mark to be able to see the mark a little bit easier. So fold it wrong sides together and then we're going to measure an inch down from the top. And then we're going to line up that fold with the middle of the fold with the fold that we put on our pocket piece one inch down and now what we're gonna do is just sew around that box that we made sorry I forgot to hit record on my sewing video so you don't get to see that part I apologize all right what we need to do is find the middle of that box that we um, that we just sewed around and a half inch um, so we're gonna draw a line but we're gonna leave a half inch on either end of that box so the line isn't gonna go all the way through leave a half inch on either end and then we're going to go from one corner to our line and draw a diagonal and then do the same to all the corners so we're going to go from the corner and draw the diagonal right to our line there in the halfway point Okay, so now we're going to take our seam ripper and we are just going to cut along those lines that we drew. Make sure that you do not cut through your stitching in the corners. You want to get as close to it as possible, but do not cut through them because um, that's what's holding your pocket piece to your body piece. Um, and then what we're going to do is we are creating an opening so that we can flip this pocket piece to the inside of the body bag piece. that our opening is all cut and created we are going to just pull the pocket piece through it to the wrong side of our body bag piece um, this can kind of get a little tricky because depending on how close you got to those corners it it should want to lay pretty flat but it might be a little tiny bit wonky mine was just because I was really nervous about getting too close to the corners and snipping through them um, but you're just going to want to pull the whole thing to the back and then once it's pulled to the back make sure that you get it as straight as you can which um, we're going to press it which is going to help a lot with that as well so make sure yep it's just all pulled to the back and then go ahead and press that so it lays nice and flat and straight Okay, so now that it's our pocket piece is pulled to the back, we are going to attach our zipper. So you're going to want your zipper teeth going out that opening that we made. Um, I'm using some double-sided hem tape. It's really old, so it didn't work that great. You can use 
just regular double-sided tape. You can use pins, you can use glue, whatever you want, but you really want to make sure that it um, stays put. So yeah, you can see here I'm struggling with my, my double-sided tape. It's like super old, y'all. Like, I don't know why I still have it, but um, I have a problem with throwing things away, I guess. <laughs> But this works. I, I did once I got it on there. It did work really, really great. Again, if you don't have double sided hem tape, glue, like just regular, like a glue stick would work. Double side, regular double sided tape, um, pins, anything you want. You just want to make sure the zipper does not move around on you when you're trying to sew. And then once you've got it attached to the wrong side, you just wanna make sure to flip it over and that it's nice and centered in your opening. Then we are going to go ahead and sew all the way around as close to that, op that pocket opening as you can. And then when you get to the, yeah, make sure your zipper is on the, the outside of your, your fabric. And then just when you get to the point where your zipper is closed uh, or opened, open it the rest of the way so that the zipper pull is out of your way of your your presser foot there oh my gosh I absolutely love it it's so that was so easy peasy and so cute and it works um, I was just giving a little test there to make sure it didn't get snagged on anything. But okay, now that that's done, we are going to take our other pocket piece and lay them right sides together. Don't mind my little box there. I accidentally, um, I made a mistake and used the other pocket piece. Anyways, don't worry about that. You shouldn't have a box on yours. Um, just go ahead and line up those raw edges of both pocket pieces and just pin around. And then we are going to sew all the way around those, the top, bottom, and sides of that pocket piece. Right, so our pocket bag is all attached and our zipper looks so cute. Oh my gosh, look at that. Perfect zipper pocket. All right, now we are going to start to assemble the exterior of the bag. Those slits that we have at the bottom of our bag, we are gonna fold them in half so that they are right sides together and um, just matching up those raw edges right to the point of that V. So just on all, both of your body pieces, just fold those slits in half. Okay, so now that those slip pieces are all folded in half, we are going to take a 3 8 inch seam allowance from um, the top of the corner all the way down to the bottom, and that's just going to form those the bottom part for, of our bag.
All right, so our exterior pieces are all done. What we're gonna do now is we are gonna fold one of the, um, the bottom pieces in so that we can lay these exterior pieces right sides together. Um, so they'll nestle right in when you kind of push those corner pieces in. And we're just gonna lay them right sides together and pin all the way around. Okay, so once we have the um, making sure our raw edges are lined up again along the bottom and the sides, we're going to take 3 8 inch seam allowance and just sew all the way from one side up to the other side, leaving the top open. Okay, so we've got that all stitched together. Now we are going to remove some of the bulk from the seams. So just get, cut around as close to the seam allowance as you can get. Um, I would recommend leaving maybe an, a quarter of an inch there. Um, kind of depends again on what fabric base you're using, right? If you've got something really bulky like vinyl, you're gonna wanna get as close as you can just to take as much of the, the bulkiness out. But if you're using like cotton woven or canvas, you can probably leave a little bit more leeway, but really make sure that you don't cut through those stitches either on the front or the back of, of it. So just kind of double check where you're cutting while you go. Okay, now that the seam allowance is all removed, we are going to flip it right sides out. Um, and you get to see how cute your bag is starting to look. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love it. I can't wait. All right, make sure all those little corner pieces are, are nice and flat and pushed out. Um, again, I'm using vinyl, so it's kind of harder than if you're using woven or something. A little bit more flexible, but okay. Yep, just checking my zipper again. I'm just, I'm in love with it. So sorry, I keep playing with it. Making sure those corners are pushed out and look at how cute it's looking. Oh my gosh, it's so sparkly. I, I'm just in love, I can't wait. Okay. Let's attach those O-ring or D-ring <laughs> straps to our bag. You're going to find that middle seam where we attach the, two, the front and the back bag pieces together and leaving a quarter of an inch above the strap piece. So the strap piece will hang over the top of your bag a quarter of an inch. You're just gonna wanna center those strap pieces on that seam. We're gonna baste them in, and this is where I start to realize like this is a little too thick. <laughs> My machine wasn't super in love with it, but um, it gets worse, so just hold on. <laughs> Now that those are basted on, it is time to attach our flap piece. So put the um, front of your bag right down towards the bottom so that the zipper is at the top. And then you're gonna put the exterior part of your flap on top of the, the back side of your bag. And we're just going to um, make sure it's lined up evenly so that you have the same space between um, the both sides of your bag and the flap. And then just go ahead and pin and clip that there. And then we are going to baste that on with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. 
I just want to take a second here too to say that if you've got any of your interfacing showing, just trim up your flap piece. Other words, when you go to sew this on, it's going to be a nightmare. I did not do that and I wish I would have. Okay, so all of our exterior pieces are now attached to our bag. I'm just going to test my um, closing one more time to make sure that everything lines up and I love it and Look at how cute this is gonna be. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. I'm so excited, I'm so excited. Now that our exterior is all put together, it's time to work on our interior. So we're gonna start with that interior pocket piece. You're gonna take the piece with the interfacing on it and the piece with the, without the interfacing and put them right sides together. And then we're just gonna pin or clip all the way around those two pieces, making sure the raw edges are lined up. Now when we get to the top of this pocket piece, we are gonna to wanna to make sure to leave about a two inch gap so that we can um, turn it, flip it right sides out. So we're gonna sew, starting on one side of our two inch gap, we're gonna sew all the way around until we get to the other side, leaving again a two inch gap there. Sorry, I forgot to hit record on my sewing video, but here you can see that I sewed all the way around, leaving a two inch gap. So now what we need to do though, is we need to trim the, the seam allowance away, but we're gonna leave the seam allowance where that gap is. So you're kind of gonna have like a little tab at the top. So get as close to those stitches that you can without clipping through any of them and just cut all the way around, but leave that, um, the two inches at the gap there. Leave those, leave that seam allowance there. Okay, so now we are going to flip our pocket so that the right sides are out. So just pull it through that opening that we have at the top of the pocket, making sure to push all the, the rounded corners and everything out so it's laying nice and flat. All right, once everything is folded right side out and everything's nice and flat, we are going to tuck in those tab pieces at the top um, so that they are l even now with the rest of it. And then we are going to press those nice and flat and straight. Okay, now everything's pressed closed and that gap is, um, is inside, folded inside. We are just gonna sew along, top stitch along the top of that pocket piece. Okay, so now it's time to attach our pocket piece to our lining piece. So just take one of your bag interior pieces and we are going to fold it in half wrong sides together so that we can find the middle of that interior piece. And then the same thing with our pocket. We're just gonna fold it in half so that we've got, and then finger press it, so we've got a crease there to line up. And then we are going to go an inch and a half down from the top, line up those creases so that they're nice and centered on each other. And then we're gonna stitch the pocket to the lining piece. Uh, you're gonna wanna lead, stitch over the top of the flap just a little bit. I did like an inch. I probably would only do like an inch, like a half an inch max. Um, but you're gonna wanna just, that's gonna help it stop, not gape as much. So just a little bit on the top and then all the way around, all the way to the other side and then a little bit on the top again. Okay, so our pocket is attached to our lining piece, and as you can see, I wish I would have left my um, my gap, a li my opening a little bit wider. Um, so that's why I recommend just a half an inch and not an inch. But just like we did with our exterior pieces now, with our lining, we are gonna, where that V is, cut in the bottom, we're just gonna fold those in half right sides together. So now that both of our lining pieces at the V are folded in half, 
what we're going to do is use a 3 8 inch seam allowance. We're going to go from the corner or the end, whichever you prefer, and sew to the other side. So if you go from the corner, you're going to sew to the bottom. If you go from the end, you're going to sew up past the corner using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, it's coming together, oh my gosh. All right, now just like with our exterior, we're gonna push the corners to in, we're gonna push the corners out on one of the lining pieces and then they should nestle right into each other. And we are just going to pin along the sides and the bottom of our lining piece. Okay, so now that everything's pinned together, we need to leave a gap, an opening at the bottom of our lining piece. Um, if you're using woven or canvas or anything like that, just leave like a two inch gap or so. But if you're using vinyl, you're gonna want, um, oh, sorry, a four inch gap. <laughs> if you're using vinyl though, you're gonna want a lot bigger gap because it gets pretty tough to pull those through. So from one side of our gap, up one side of our lining and then the other side of our gap up the, up the other side of our lining. We're just going to sew to attach those pieces together using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, so our lining pieces are all attached together with our opening there at the bottom. Again, if you're using vinyl, I recommend a much wider opening than that. It's going to be really hard. Okay, so we are going to open up the bag so that the right sides are still on the inside of our bag. So the outside still on the um, outside. And we are going to put our exterior right sides together with our lining. Make sure that flap is open um, and we are going to just put it in there, line up those seams, those side seams. Okay, so once the, the exterior is inside our lining and the side seams are lined up, just making sure the raw edges of the exterior and the interior are um, aligned, we're just gonna pin all the way around the bag Okay, so this is where, again, that bulk of those D-ring straps or O-ring straps gets really tricky. We are going to need to sew using a 3 8 inch seam allowance all the way around the top of this bag. Um, because my vinyl is so thick on those side seams now, it was a nightmare to sew around them. So I definitely recommend if you're using vinyl, when making those O-ring or D-ring straps, whatever you want to call them, whatever you're using, only fold them in half or you are even using a leather needle. It, you can see here, I had to hand turn my, my machine to get it to go over those things because it was so stinking thick, but it's cute and it turned out great. So I love it. <laughs>
Okay, now our interior and exterior bags are attached at the top. We are going to berth our bag through the hole we left at the bottom. You can see I widened mine a lot because it was nearly impossible. So we're gonna just pull the bag through the hole and flip it so now the right sides of all the pieces are on the outside. And then we are just going to take the opening for the lining that we just birthed our bag through and we're gonna fold it in, fold both sides in so the raw edges are now enclosed in, in your lining. And then we're gonna press that flat. Okay, so now the raw edges are pressed into the inside, so we're just going to top stitch around that top, that bottom part where that opening was. Okay, now our lining is all closed and we are just going to turn it, flip it so that it's on the inside of our bag now. Um, really push those corners down so that they are nestled into the corners of your exterior. Oh my gosh, look how sparkly that is. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. I got that. It's the Diamond Dust from So Unique Designs. They were one of our sponsors for our sewing challenge last month. And oh my gosh, it is gorgeous. All right, again, I'm just folding over my flap, making sure everything looks nice. It's um, sitting nice. It is absolutely beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Now what we're going to do is you just want to top stitch all the way around um, an eighth of an inch away, quarter inch, however much you want. Just top stitch all the way around the top of your bag. we're so close to being done all we have to do is attach the strap and it is gorgeous okay so for your strap you are gonna take the end that doesn't have the slider and you are gonna feed it through your ring from the inside of your bag towards the outside of your bag and you're just gonna fold it over enough that you have enough leeway then making sure it's not um, folded it's not twisted or anything and then you're gonna just slip it through both sides of your slider strap so that it goes up one end and then over the other so it goes around that middle again and then um, just kind of adjust it make sure it's not twisted or anything and then you're gonna put it through the other ring going from the outside towards the inside fold it up about an inch inch and a half and then we're gonna just top stitch that down I did it quite a few times because this bag um, the strap is gonna have a lot of um, pull on it so I want to make sure it's nice and sturdy so I just went over it a few different times Oh my gosh, and here we have it, y'all. A fully functioned bag that's got not one, but two pockets, a invisible magnetic snap, a, a zipper, a, an adjustable strap. It is just perfect. It is so sparkly and so cute, and I absolutely love it. I really hope that you enjoyed this sew along. This was way outside of my comfort zone using vinyl and sewing a bag, but look how amazing it is. I cannot wait to see yours. So thank you again for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.